Bhagavad Gita, verse 3.34 All the senses are helplessly controlled by one's attachment and aversion to their respective objects. Therefore, one should never come under their sway, because such attachment and aversion are impediments for the sadhaka's progress upon the path of auspiciousness. Sar Ardavashini, it is not possible for scripture to force injunctions upon a person whose nature is extremely wicked. As long as a wicked nature has not arisen by performing sinful action, a person should not allow his senses to wander willfully and blind him to sense objects. Sri Bhagavan is speaking this verse beginning with Indriyasya, Indriyasya, to explain this. The repetition of the word Indriya here indicates the sense objects of each respective sense. Although to look at another's wife, touch her or allure her by giving her gifts is forbidden in scripture, an immoral man is still attracted to doing so. On the other hand, although it is prescribed in scripture to see, touch, serve and offer charity to the guru, brahmanas, holy places and guests, an impious man is averse to do such behavior. To come under the influence of either of these mentalities is not proper. In other words, it is not proper either to develop attachment to a woman by seeing her or to be malicious to someone who obstructs that attachment. Similarly, an aspirant on the path of self-realization should neither be attached to rich and palatable foodstuffs that are to his taste, nor averse to dry, unpalatable food, items and objects that are not to his taste. In the same way, he should not be attached to seeing and hearing about his own son, nor should he be averse to seeing and hearing about his enemy's son. It is inappropriate to come under the influence of such attachment and aversion. This has been explained. Sar Ardavashini Prakashikariti The senses are of two types. Knowledge acquiring senses, Gyanidriya, and working senses, Karmendriya. There are five knowledge acquiring senses. The eyes, ears, nose, tongue and skin, which accept form, sound, smell, taste and touch as their respective objects of gratification. There are also five working senses, speech, hands, legs, anus and genitals, which performs the actions of speaking, accepting, moving, evacuating and procreating. The practitioner of bhakti engages these eleven senses, including the mind, in various types of service for the pleasure of Bhagavan Sri Krishna. He does not enjoy the various sense objects separately for himself. In this way, he can easily overpower the uncontrolled senses and by engaging his controlled senses in the service of the Lord, he can attain the supreme goal of life. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur quotes Krishna as saying, O Arjuna, if you think that the jiva's acceptance of sense objects will make most of them more addicted to those sense objects and as a result liberation from the bondage of their religious duty, karma, will become impossible, then listen to my words. It is not true that all objects are detrimental to the spiritual progress of the jivas. It is only the jivas' attachment and aversion 
to the sense objects that are his greatest enemies. As long as you have this material body, you have to accept sense objects. For this reason, you should accept sense objects and at the same time control your attachment and aversion to them. If you act in this way, you can deal with sense objects without becoming bound to them. You will become detached from them by gradually eliminating the attachment and aversion that develops when one falsely identifies the body with the self. In brief, you will develop appropriate renunciation or yukta vairagya. I have not instructed you to subdue attachment to objects and activities related to me, Sri Bhagavan, or to those that stimulate one's bhakti, nor have I instructed you to not be averse to objects or activities that are obstacles to bhakti. Rather, I have only instructed you to control the attachment and aversion that is related to selfish pleasure and that promotes a temperament that is opposed to bhakti. This should be understood.